All right, so now I was having problems with my running memory in PhotoP. That's the memory available to the program within the computer. And my computer is not very full. All of these computers are pretty new. So I'm going to show you the things that affect running memory, because this can be an issue with freeware and with software. So if I look at my storage settings, should be able to see, oh, they're locking everything in this new operating system, how much uh, space I have. I should have a lot of space. This is all going to be controlled by IT now, so I can't see it. But basically, if your computer is not too full of stuff, it's able to use your hard drive space as a space for running scratch disk memory for the computations these programs need to make. So it's helpful not to have other programs running. I have to have a screen recorder running, but other than that, I want to just have PhotoP running. So now I'm going to go to continue my assignment. So I have it all organized in my folder under assignment one. And I'm going to drag the PSD I saved from last week and open it up. I see all my layers. I don't really need extra layers anymore. I don't need my background sketch anymore. So I'm going to unlock that and drag it down to the trash or just hit delete. I don't really need either sketch anymore because I know what I was thinking and I can always look back to that sketch to reference it if I want to. And I've saved some memory by cropping closer to my framed size. But within the guides here, that's the composition I'm trying to do. So now, what I was doing at the end of last class was starting to play with adjustment layers, right? Like I made the pizza match the background. Now what about this stuff? Let's play with the adjustment layers. There's three adjustments that are going to help before you do really clean cutouts. The first is levels. So you go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. These are called direct adjustments. You're first going to play with the mid-tone slider. That's right here. And you're going to see if you like it better brighter or darker. And I love this in digital art because unlike traditional art, you can just see what both options give you. If you brighten it up or if you darken it. And I think I'm going to brighten it up because I like, I like that in the foreground. You can also, if there's just too much highlight, you can also limit the, the highlights, kind of put it all in shadow, or you can limit the shadows. But this mid-tone slider is, is that most helpful aspect of the levels tool. So then you say, okay, and then you can see in your history if you think that helped or not. Right. Next, I'm going to do image adjustment color balance. This is what made a huge difference in my pizza to make it match the sky a little bit before I cut it out more cleanly. So this background has a lot of cyan in it. So I can start with the midtones. It's always safest to go with the midtones. And I can push it a little bit towards the cyan. And that might look subtle, but that's a huge difference. So it started here at zero. But I want to push it a little towards cyan, just in the midtones, And now it looks like the temperature of the lighting is the same. I can play with pushing it towards blue. That works a little bit. Pushing it towards magenta, maybe a tiny bit. Then I can play with the highlights and the shadows. This gets more in particular. But I like to push the highlights to, towards the warms, towards the yellows and the reds. And then I like to push the shadows towards the blues and the cyans. And that will help give it a little bit more dimensional depth. So let's see, this is what it looked like before. This is after color balance. What's great about that is now this pasta even looks like it's kind of lit by this sky. Whereas before it definitely didn't look that way. You know, back here. It looked too yellow. So color balance helps. I'm going to hit Command S, save this stuff. It's going to save right where I opened it from. Right there. Okay, next. 
The last one we can use is hue saturation. This one is more like the Hail Mary tool. This is when you want big changes, but it's nice to check, especially when you're learning these tools. So levels, color balance, hue saturation. And I'm going to play with this hue slider, and I'm just going to shift it to one side and then the other and see if one is better. Not all the way. It gets crazy and psychedelic then, which can be fun, but not really what we're going for with believability. But I'm going to shift it to this side. And then saturation is the intensity of the color. From grayscale to super intense. And you can decide if you want to goose your intensity a little bit. Because this is coming into the foreground as well as the middle ground, I think I do. All right, next. Next layer. This spaghetti, this mountain. You start with levels. Play with the midtones. Going to darken the midtones a little bit. Going to limit the shadows so it looks like it's kind of lit by a sky. The reason I don't play with these edges too much is because if the histogram is full, like you see content all throughout this mountain range here, then it means if I push them on the edges, it means I'm turning pixels that had content to solid black. Or if I pu push this, it's turning pixels that had content to solid white. So I like to keep the, the pixel content there while just shifting it lighter or darker in the midtones. The limiting is fine. That's just saying my darkest dark is only going to be about 80%. Or my brightest white is only going to be about 20%. Okay, now that was levels. Now I can go to image adjustment, color balance. This to me is the magic one. It makes such a difference. And I can make this spaghetti match that sky so much that it no longer looks like spaghetti. But I want a nice happy medium between. So I'm going to put a little bit of green into it and a little bit of cyan. But I don't want to deaden it completely. You know, I don't want to go all the way. So that's with shadows. Let's play with midtones. Same thing. Shift it to the temperature you want. And then with highlights, I'm going to add back the, the warms just a little by going towards yellow. And so what's the difference? Again, levels, color balance, big difference. Last. Hue saturation, going to play with the hue, nope, nope, I liked it right where it was, maybe just a tiny bit warmer, yeah, and then saturation, nope, if anything I'm going to desaturate it just a bit because it's in the background. Next element, another background hill here that comes with a lot of debris in the sky that I'll show you how to get rid of. Um, but first, before we cut it out cleanly, let's play with adjustments. Levels, it's way too bright. I'm going to limit the highlights right away. I'm going to darken the midtones. Maybe dark or limit the shadows too, so it feels like it's back in the environment a little bit. Okay. Next, color balance, the magic one. I'm going to go to the midtones first. I'm going to push it more towards the blue and the cyan because that's the temperature of the sky. Right. Then I'm going to play with the shadows, push it more towards blue. Maybe a little towards green. And then in the highlights, I'm going to go the other way. With some warmth. Not too much. Okay. So now is a good time to show you, once I've adjusted the color, and I can kind of see how these are matching, I want to clean this up. I used the magic wand before, and I cut out the background. And the magic wand, with its default settings, like zero pixel feather, right? That means that when it selects touching pixels with contiguous, that's what it deletes. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's, it's picking that edge and cutting it out. Right? So it doesn't matter how many times I hit delete, that's all it's ever going to delete. If I want it instead to grow its selection a little bit, to bite into this edge, 
Before I use the tool, I'm going to set a feather. So let me deselect, go back to the magic wand, and I'm going to set a feather of just three pixels. It's not very much. This is a powerful tool. And then I'm going to select that empty space again. Now the difference is, whereas before it was selecting all of this, or around each one, now it's softened a little bit. You can't tell until you hit delete, but when I hit delete, now it kind of bites into it. The more I hit delete, the more it radiates out three pixels at a time in a gradation from my selection line. So it starts to bite away at the edge of the hamburger. And what's the side effect of that? It gets rid of all of this noise that was left before. So the magic wand on its own leaves you with lots of stuff, but then if you have a feather on for it, you can clear all that out. Now I still need more of it, so I'm going to do that same step again, but this time it's going to select closer because I've already deleted a lot. And now it's feathering and I delete away. And if I need to do it again, I can do it again. Or I can just feather by more pixels. But I think that's pretty good. Eh, over here. So let's try. Let's be bold. Let's feather by 15 pixels. Because this hamburger bun is an extreme case. There we go. Really bite away. because it's my background hill that, that can work. Now let's try that for something else, like my spaghetti. Or, better yet, my pizza, because it's got some debris around it. So I'm going to keep that 15 pixel feather. And now I'm going to use magic wand, and I'm going to uncheck contiguous, because when you're selecting empty space, the computer is very good at selecting empty space. It's not going to get anything wrong. And now when I hit delete, it's going to bite away at all that debris. And it's just going to soften the edge and it will make that pizza look like it's floating in the sky. What about the spaghetti? Or the goulash, rather. I can try it. Why not? It's a way to get rid of that hard edge instead of using an eraser. And I just delete. Zoom in so you can see what it's doing. It's biting away. Just delete. Delete, 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 delete. Because when it's feathered, it's going to do it like those number of pixels at a time. Out radiating from your selection. Okay, the pizza, or not the pizza, the spaghetti. Yeah, if I want to get that little, little rim of highlight that's left. I don't want to do it by 15 pixels. I want to do it more like three pixels, but I select the empty space. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Got to make sure you're on the right layer. Command D to deselect. And now just hit delete a few times until you get the result you want. All right. Next. My chicken, uh, my chicken definitely needs this. But first, what do I do before I try to cut it out cleanly? Adjustments, yes, direct adjustments, very good. The reason I call them direct adjustments is these are not found under layer. Those would be called adjustment layers. These are not clipping masks. These are not layer styles. These are under image and adjustments. So it means we're affecting the pixels in the layer directly, not indirectly. It makes it a lot easier to understand. First I play with which one? Levels, yep, for the lights and darks. And I play with the midtones first. And I'm going to limit the highlights a little bit because they're in the background. There we go. Now, my favorite, what's next? Color balance. There are shortcuts for these if you want to learn them, but they'll see them in there and if they work for your browser. But I'm going to start with.